Stop working out, training, or going to the gym until you really understand these principles. We're gonna give you an eight step breakdown to get to level 10 in your favorite area of training, each of which starts with the letter P plus a personal challenge for you in each step of this video. Whether that's ninja strength, power move, cirque, free run, or handstand. And we'll do it within 10 minutes together and give you a blueprint for the next two years of your training. People don't understand why we do it or how we do it. That's easy. The why is because it's tremendously transformative mentally and physically. It makes a person strong for daily life. And it's fun to unlock new skills whether you're just a kid, teen, or a wise old adult. Even with all the videos made for the Lee Weiland channel or for Pacific Rim Athletics and Powerbatics, people sometimes don't get it. But if and when they do, there's often mystery about how. Maybe you're wondering, when I grow up, how can I be like these 50 plus year olds building and sustaining this level of strength and skill? Or how in the world can I be like these kids, teens, women, men achieving level 10 in as little as two years? Or heck, I just want to get my first pull up or handstand and not take a decade to do so. There's an eight step process, one for each of the current level 10s and power batics at Pacific Rim Athletics, Clayton, Venny, Tyler, Ben, Alex, Sean, Gabe, and then one for Georgia who is level nine. Each step will have two points. One point will focus on what you should do literally today. And one point will focus on what a coach should be telling you. If not, then at least you have this video. Clayton was an early trainee at Pacific Rim Athletics and was the first to become level 10. It took him two years or so. Everyone thought it was pure talent, some sort of magical skill he possessed. It wasn't that at all. He only did some competitive swimming as a kid, but we literally worked from scratch through every single skill he acquired. There were certainly people who trained that were faster and stronger, but they did not become level 10, and he did. The single biggest reason is patience. I call him the tortoise because he started out just coming one to two days a week, hardly anything. I remember him first learning to vault, then he learned to flip here and there, then up to three days a week, then every day. He also, and this is extremely important, never asked a single question. Some people question literally everything to their own detriment. I can't remember him asking even one in any of his training sessions. He just listened and implemented day by day, week by week, month by month, until he soared past his peers. This can and should be applied to all ages, all levels, and all areas of life. And coaches should be telling you that. It's their job to tell you the blunt, honest truth. Slow down, be patient, listen and implement. At the same time, what they're instructing you should be making clear, demonstrable, consistent progress. Perhaps that progress for you is just happiness and a sense of community. Perfect. For others, you want to gain strength and skill and go up through the levels. Coaches should be helping you get to each new level. Each level of power batics takes between 8 and 24 weeks. Meaning if you've been working out for years or decades at the gym and still don't have a handstand, muscle up or backflip, something is way off. So for Clayton, he was right on point. About every two months or so, he'd level up in skill. Challenge for you. Go through a full 24 hour day, including your education or job or your physical training and ask zero questions. You quietly listen, work through it mentally and then execute to the very best of your ability and patiently see what the results become of that. And here's one straight for me. Do a perfect horse dance for 60 seconds. If you don't know Venny's story by now, he's an attorney, 54 years old, five hip surgeries, four knee surgeries, spine fusion, shoulder surgery, ankle surgery, not from this training, but from genetics and life, though the ankle did happen at the gym. He's been through it all and has overcome it all to become level 10 in ninja strength. Hugh Jackman has nothing on Venny who is rightfully the real Wolverine. And he demonstrates a vital step in the process to level 10, perseverance. Perseverance is continuing to go forward even when all hope seems to be lost. It must come from within you, but sometimes it must come from outside sources too. Your coaches should be pushing you down the field until you can get your feet back underneath yourself to keep going on your own. So a challenge for you, for 24 hours, any and every obstacle, hardship, health issue, or roadblock you faced, you don't talk about it at all unless it is with joy. 
like James 1, 2-4 says. And you work right on through it. And stand. Yeah. That's it. Tyler developed a passion for powerbatics. His parents said when he wants to do something, it becomes like tunnel vision. He was that way about piano, and then it became that way about free run. He was an early trainee that did a little here and there. And I'm sure you know it's easy to not put in as much as you should, give up or quit. Maybe you can identify. A lot of students are like this, and Tyler was at first very similar. But then a light switch turned on mentally. And then instead of a few days here or there, it became four days a week, five days a week. You don't just brush your teeth once a week, do you? By the way, get rid of the fluoride. Daily training until he built every single kata and for his level 10 free run test, he had to execute each one back to back with limited rest in between, like rounds of a boxing match. And then that passion trickled over into hand balancing and then power moves. Coaches must figure out how to help ignite that passion. And not only that, but they must take that passion and continue building it into a bonfire of strength and skill. Your personal challenge? Do this right now. Write in the comments an aspect of physical training you are passionate about or want to grow in passion for. Maybe it's one of the five elements of power batics, ninja strength, free run, power moves, circ, or hand balancing. A very important step in attaining level 10 is having balanced pride. Ben came with a lot of prior experience. He trained by himself and with his friends, even getting all the way up to a full in back out and tumbling. But he had zero problems when it came to implementing new strategies for training. When people are prideful and approach learning from the opposite angle, even without realizing it, they never resolve their blind spots and weak links. And everyone has them, no matter how good we are. That said, Ben built up to double twisting, double backflips. He learned dozens of new skills that he hadn't acquired before and after filling in all the holes, became level 10 in free run. Coaches should be pressing on those weak links, not literally, but creating training that targets everything you don't wanna train and make you do it. Your personal challenge, in the next 24 hours, when someone asks you to do something that you don't wanna do, do it anyway, while making yourself want to do it. A crazy paradox, I know. But you can have all the humility, passion, perseverance, and patience in the world Yet without this step, it will never amount to anything. You must, as Alex showed, have persistence. Persistence is obstinate continuance until you break through a difficulty. To be blunt, it's stubbornness in the hard work. When it was go time for him to start really preparing for level 10 test, that became his life. There were about three moves that continued to elude him. Not only did he train every day, but multiple times a day, ramping up training, fighting through the frustration, going back and getting into a positive headspace, and then attacking it again. And then becoming the fastest and youngest person to attain level 10 within a time of 1.5 years. Coaches must, must, must push their students to get to that point of full-on total commitment to solving the problem. And they must, must, must know how to guide that laser because it could have bad outcomes or some of the best outcomes you'll ever see in your life if you know how to guide that laser. Personal challenge. In the next 24 hours, go do that thing that's tough for you. It doesn't even have to be physical training. It could be talking to some person or whatever. Go do it regardless how it makes you feel. And there's nothing like putting in the hard work. Sean became level 10 in ninja strength after years upon years of work. He built every strength move in ninja strength, one progression at a time. Now he can come to the gym and easily do a one-arm pull up and maintain that even when he's not training all the time. Just that grunt, do the hard work kind of mentality. Coaches, push yourselves and your students to keep showing up like that and just doing the work that it takes. Another personal challenge for you, go do 50 push-ups, 50 squats, 50 V-ups, and end with 50 bridge push-ups. And if you can't, then be like Clayton, don't ask questions. And then be like Sean and just do it anyway. This next step is a tough one. Pay attention, pay attention to all the little things, pay attention to all the big things, pay attention to each other. Just be present and pay attention. Get out of your own way and pay attention to what is in front of you. Georgia did this in Cirque. Cirque is absolutely brutal too. Requires insane levels of strength, tons of details. It's easy to get frustrated and take it out on others, not paying attention to what's necessary or most important. 
learning to shift gears and get back on track mentally is vital for yourself and those around you. Coaches, sometimes it's not the strength or the skill, it's the relationship, the attention to each other. Students must learn to listen and implement regardless of feelings, paying attention to even the most incidental. And coaches must give what's necessary, even when it might not be the most warm and fuzzy. Your challenge in the next 24 hours, when someone suggests something you might not want to hear, pay attention, think about it, and make the personal change. Gabe demonstrated every single one of these eight steps across, ironically, eight years to become level 10 in free run. He was just a small kid when he started training, pretty much the middle of six, chasing after his older siblings for progress, mad he didn't get there as quickly, frustration, growth spurts, the whole nine yards. Sometimes the game can feel rigged. Gabe weathered every storm and not only rode the roller coaster, but became its captain, learning to train hard with a positive mindset. When he sees other people going through the grinder, he smiles like a wise old man with genuine understanding of how much it takes and how much positivity matters. And the same is true of our very best students. That's how they make the most progress. Like Che or Matt or PJ, Patrick, or many other students of our Pacrimian universe. Whatever the background or current state in life, the most progress is made when positivity is at its highest. Your challenge for the next 24 hours? Subscribe to the channel, just plan. Don't let anything get you down. If something is about to, just switch your mind to positive. If this resonated with you, then subscribe. And more importantly, opt in so you don't miss any of the trainings all of our top students receive. Plus, to connect with me and my team so we can get to know each other and to start training. See you in the next video and in training soon.